Hi everyone, uh, in this tutorial uh, we are going to learn how to create a high split particle dispersion model. Uh, we will be using PM2.5 as an example. So in this tutorial uh, we are going to consider the case of a wildfire uh, in this demonstration. So we are going to model the pathway of PM2.5 dispersion uh, during a fire event that started in this particular protected area and the start time was the fire actually started on this day at this time 10 o'clock and it ended by around 7 o'clock in the evening on the next day so this is the time data of that particular fire event and in addition to this we need some more model parameters like you have to be ready with these parameters before you uh, before we implement the code in r first of all you need to uh, have this is emission rate like emission rate is nothing but how much quantity of particular matter uh, is being released into the environment per unit of time or second so i'll show an example like how you can estimate the emission rate in the case of a wildfire so so in this example you can see uh if 500 kilogram of biomass is burned over a period of three hours then the rate of emission will be we can calculate it using this uh this particular equation but before that you need to have the emission factor value for pm 2.5 during biomass burning so which is going to be 3.2 gram per kilogram in the case of biomass burning it will be different for solid waste burning or petroleum burning or something else so this emission factor value you can obtain it from the literature you have to make a thorough search and by the term emission emission factor it means that when you burn one kilogram of uh, biomass 3.2 gram of pm 2.5 is going to get released so that is what meant by 3.2 gram per kilogram like 3.2 gram of particulate matter 2.5 is released during the combustion or burning of one kilogram of biomass and in this example we are having 500 kilogram of biomass and the emission factor of pm 2.5 is already i obtained it from the literature which is going to be 3.2 gram per kilogram so the total amount of total quantity of pm 2.5 released during the fire event will be 500 multiplied by 3.2 though you are going to get the total amount of uh, pm 2.5 which got released into the environment and the time you can see here it uh, the particular file uh, lasted for three hours so the rate of emission we can use this equation em emission rate which will be in gram per second is going to be material burned or biomass burnt in this case multiplied by the emission factor of pm 2.5 divided by time in seconds so three hours we can convert this into seconds and if you do the calculation you will get the value which is going to be 0 0.148 gram per second so this is how you estimate the emission factor of pm 2.5 in the case of biomass burning as i said in the case of waste fire or uh, some other fuel like uh, wood burning these uh, emission factors will be very different so anyway now we know how to estimate the emission rate right in the case of uh, biomass burning or a wildfire and in addition to that you need the diameter of the particle with which you are going to create the model in my case you know pm 2.5 has a diameter of 2.5 micrometer and you need to have the density which i obtained from the literature and the shape factor so shape factor is a value which ranges between 0 and 1 uh, depending whether the particle is circular or elongated or irregular in shapes we will assign a shape factor value and for this example I chose 0 0.6 uh, which better represent the you know symmetry of this particular matter and it varies from you know particle to particle and anyways uh, the release height is going to be 5 meter which means uh, the height from from where or the height from where the emission is you know starting so 5 meter is an approximate canopy height 
and that is why I considered it as uh, the release height as 5 meter. So that's it. Now we know what are the model parameters we need to have. And with that, let's get back into our tutorial. So I'm going to open my R Studio. So first of all, uh, this is the plot we are going to create by the end of this tutorial. I just kept it there so that you will have an idea about what we are going to create. So I will zoom in and show you what I created in fact. So we are dealing with a lot of data, a lot of particles. So uh, my system is kind of slow now because you are going to need a higher processor to deal with such a huge amount of, you know, data, especially particle, especially when you create our trajectories and particle dispersion model, uh, it's going to consume a, a lot of uh, memory. Anyways, let it be, uh, I'll be explaining these codes first of all. So you need to have two libraries or two packages loaded in your R environment that are going to be split R and tidyverse. So split R is not currently available. Uh, you cannot directly download it from this option packages install, but tidyverse you can download it, uh, install it from here itself. If you search, you will get it and you can just click install and do it. But that's not the case with split R. You have to install it by running these two lines of code. First of all, you need to load a library, uh, load a package called dev tools. If you're not having it already, you have to go to install and install that package first. Then you have to install uh, split R directly from the GitHub. So I have already done it. So I'm not going to do it again, but you have to run these two lines of code. Okay, so after that you have to load these two libraries, packages, and then you have to set the timeout duration because this timeout duration is actually uh, being set because uh, when you're downloading a lot of data, a huge amount of data, it's going to take a lot of time. And by default, the timeout period in R is I think 60 seconds. And after that, the download process will get canceled. So we don't want that to happen in the, in the case of this particular, you know, uh, uh, this particular video so I'm going to keep it uh, 10,000 seconds so that the whole uh, bunch of files will get downloaded like we are providing enough time for the process to get completed and it is after that we will be creating a high split particle dispersion model so for that you need to run this huge chunk of code and we are going to save that model into this particular variable called dispersion model 20 so let me explain what we are going to do. First of all, we'll create a dispersion model and we are piping it into the add source function. So this pipe op operator comes with this tidyverse package and it's very handy and you should be, you know, you should use it. Like we are, you know, supplying this data into this particular function. So then we need to add the source parameters. So first of all, we are going to provide a name to our uh, model or uh, we are going to model these particles, right? PM 2.5. That's why I'm go I have given this name particle and the latitude and longitude of the location where the fire event has occurred. And the height is going to be the release height, which was five in our case. And the rate I'm specifying 72.08. This is a different uh, example, not the one I showed in the PowerPoint presentation. And the diameter is going to be 2.5. The density is going to be uh, 1.5. And the shape factor, as I mentioned, is going to be 0 0.6 for PM 2.5. Then we have to specify the time at which the fire event started and when it ended by these two lines of code. In the next step, you have to specify the dispersion parameters. So when the dispersion started and when it ended. So these two times, like release start and the dispersion start time will be, you know, equal, like same. You don't have to make any changes. Uh, you just keep it the same uh, time interval. And after that, you need to speci specify the direction of your uh, dispersion of particles because PM, you need to know uh, from 
from that particular point in which direction the particles you know actually dispersed and so it should be forward we are looking at the forward direction and the met, met type is going to be the data you are going to use for creating the particle dispersion model in this case it is gdas1 and you can uh, use reanalysis data also which is going to be of higher resolution and also of higher size and the remaining options you can keep null and finally we will run that model so you have to select this whole chunk of code and run it by clicking here i'm not going to do that because if i do that the algorithm will start downloading the meteorological data required for implementing this model and that is going to take a lot of time like maybe more than 15 minutes so i don't want that now i have already downloaded it and you can but in your case you have to run this chunk of code but where most of the times uh, what happens is that uh, the when you run this chunk of code an error is going to come like uh, fail to connect to the server can't download the data or can't fetch the data so in such cases what you have to do is that you have to select the whole chunk of code and run it again if it fails again you have to repeat the step once more i think that is going to work like some server problems can happen sometimes okay then now we have successfully created this dispersion model right and after that you need to get the output table this function you can use this function function to extract the dispersion data out of the dispersion model we just created so this is going to be it you can run this line and then comes the uh, important part so now we have successfully extracted the table right and now we need to uh, create a function to make our map where is it okay uh, not this one so basically before there was already a function to plot the dispersion data to create the particle dispersion model but uh, recently what happened was that um, you know this is a base map what you see here so there were several base maps within this plot function open street map carto db map s3 map and all then there was a stamen map as well so stamen actually uh, moved into or migrated into a different server and due to that this plot function it actually stopped working and uh, the author hasn't made any changes to the you know original function so if you use the previous plot function uh, dispersion plot function it is not going to work anymore so i had to do some modification to the original function this is the function created by the author and i had to remove the components uh, related to stem and map to create this modified version of that particular uh, plot function so you don't have to do anything i have already done the coding all you have to do is you have to select this chunk of code and just click run now you have successfully created the a uh, plot function to create the particle dispersion map so going down we have done everything now and finally we can call our dispersion plot new function on the table we just extracted and if you click run it will create the uh, pm 2.5 particle dispersion plot for that fire event so it's going to take a while to appear yeah done so the emission started from this point and as a result of the you know prevailing winds and atmospheric conditions it dispersed towards this western side the arabian sea so you can zoom and have a closer look at it uh system is hanging a little bit because there is too much data within that map and my processor is not that good anyway so yeah we have got it here and i will zoom in and show you i'll show you a better picture like okay it's getting zoomed now so step by step i'm zooming in 
and now you are having a better picture of the pattern of dispersion of those pm2 point pollutants uh, the potential pattern you can see right it started from this point and start it it was spreading or it was dispersing to throughout this region so that's it that's how you implement a high split pm2.5 particle dispersion model in r so thanks for watching